Hello and welcome to Rams Cam. I'm senior writer Nick Wagner, joined today by a special guest, NFL Network analyst Charlie Cashley. Charlie, thanks for taking the time. Let's jump right into it. We're only about two weeks away from this draft. Give us a general overview of kind of how you see the talent from top to bottom in this group and maybe a couple of positions where you think it's really deep. Well, I think probably the best position in this draft is defensive tackle. I think there's a lot of good players there. Uh, you've got Brockers from LSU, Poe from Memphis State, and Cox from uh, Mississippi State. And those are three top tackles. And depending upon who you talk to, you're going to find different ratings. But you have a lot of depth there. I think if you're picking the second round, uh, you can get a pretty good defensive tackle there. So I think there's some, some depth, necessary, not necessarily great depth, but I think there's some good players, first-round players, top of the second in the offensive line. I think that's a positive there. Receivers. Uh, I think there's a pretty good depth in the receivers going through the draft. Uh, I don't know if there's a lot of elite receivers, but those are a couple of the high points of the draft as I see it. Uh, let, let's dive into the Rams a little bit. Obviously, a big move already made, an unusual move, making a trade that long before the draft. How do you see that trade, the, the value that the Rams got from Washington in that, and how can that type of a trade set up a franchise for the future? Well, I think it's a tremendous trade there because what you've done is you've, got, you've given yourself three really good picks this year. You have, obviously, you have your first, the sixth position. You have the first pick in the second round, and then you have the sixth pick in the, in the second round. So you're, uh, you've got six, 33, 39. I think that's tremendous. But more importantly, you have two ones next year and two ones the year after that. The advantage of the two ones next year is now Jeff Fisher, Les Snead. They're going to have a year together. That scouting staff's going to have a year together. So you're going to get better every year in your communication ability and your scouting ability as an organization the longer you are together. And by having those two ones, it gives you flexibility next year. You know, maybe you trade back. Maybe you pick up a couple of twos. Maybe you get another one the following year. So it gives you tremendous options as you go forward. Sitting there with that number six pick, a lot of people kind of view this draft as a six-player draft, at least six elite players. One of those players figures to be there for the Rams. How do you look at those guys? USC tackle Matt Khalil, Oklahoma State receiver Justin Blackman, Alabama running back Trent Richardson, and of course LSU cornerback Morris Claiborne. Who's the best fit there for the Rams, and, and how do you evaluate all those guys? Well, I, I think any of them have the potential to go to the Pro Bowl. So any of them right away become a good fit for the Rams because you're getting a Pro Bowl player. I think Blackman is obviously the, the most need right now at the wide receiver position. It gives your quarterback, Bradford, a guy, a go-to guy. Now, I think Blackman is a physical player. I think he's got good separation in his routes. I think he does a nice job running after the catch. I would not put him in the same class as, say, A.J. Green a year ago, but I think this guy is consistently a top-10 player year after year in the draft. So I like him. So that's the guy that helps you the most right away. Now Richardson I think is the best of the four players. I think this guy can run inside, he can run outside, he's physical, he's got speed, does a nice job in the passing game, catching the ball, running the screens, and the guy can block. So he's a complete back. I think he's the best of them. Yes, you have Steven Jackson, but running backs, you know, Steven Jackson is towards the end of his career, a great career, but Richardson can come in, spell him, and then take right over here in the near future. Now Claiborne, you know, you've got some corners there to work with. you got Finnegan. Claiborne would give you a tremendous match, and he'd have depth at the nickel position uh, with your other corners that you have there. Uh, but Claiborne, I think, has pro bowl ability. Now Khalil, I think this guy's a really good player. I don't think he is as good as Smith, who Dallas took last year. But if you get him, you plug him in at left tackle. Saffold goes to right tackle. Jason Smith, as we know, has had some injury problems and a high cap number. So each one of these four players fits. Blackman helps you the most today. One of the other things that people have been talking about is potentially trading down again for the Rams. Do you see value in that, or is it more important for them to get one of those six elite players right now? Well, you know, it's interesting. We always talk about six elite players, and, and I'm, I'm in that conversation this year, too. I think there's six players that are a cut above. When you go look at it three years later, there's going to be players that are taking seven through 20 or whatever that are going to be better than some of these players. Of course, we don't know that right now. We can only go by what we think. Personally, I would stay and get one of these six players. Get a guy that you know can line up and start right now and be a good player at a position that has a little bit of pizzazz to it, a little bit of a headline to it. Not that that's why you do it, because I think you could use any one of these six players, but to, uh, trading back and taking a defensive tackle, I'm not sure that's as sexy as you want to be at this point in time. I think a little momentum out of this draft is important. I think 33 and 33, you get two good players there, too. 
And along with that, you, you mentioned a sexier position, but isn't it very important for the Rams to start building around Sam Bradford, giving him the tools that he needs to succeed? No question about it. I, I, I love Sam Bradford. I think he's one of the best quarterbacks to come out here in the last 10 years. In fact, the only two better than him, I thought, were Eli Manning and Carson Palmer. So I think this guy's a pro Bowl player. But you got to give him some tools. Right now, he needs help on the outside. So if Blackman's there, they, you get obvious help. Now, Blackman may not be there. So my turn, you might say to yourself, is it more important to go back and maybe get Floyd than take a Richardson or take a Claiborne or take a Khalil? I think I'd take one of those six and then work from there. And you mentioned the two picks that the Rams have in the second round. Can you give us some names, maybe some guys you think would be interesting fits for St. Louis here? Well, let's take it by position. Let's say running back. Let's say Richardson isn't taken. You got Doug Martin of Boise State. I think he's the second best back in the draft. This guy has the ability to, to run inside, put his foot in the ground, run hard, make some yardage after the, ca- yardage after the contact. And he is effective in the passing game. And he has some speed to get to the outside. So uh, I, he is not as good as Trent Richardson, don't get me wrong. But I, but I think at the top of the second round, this would be a good pick. Now, if you're ter- talking about maybe a defensive tackle, which that's a position they could use too, a guy like Brandon Thompson from Clemson, big physical guy, run stuffer, Jarrell Worthy, Michigan State, another guy who can play the run pretty good. You know, you're not going to get a complete player at 33 if you're taking necessarily a defensive tackle, but you can get a pretty good player. Now, wide receiver, a couple interesting guys there, Stephen Hill, Georgia Tech, fast, plays fast. Guy, when I watch him on tape, when this guy wants to run a deep route, he runs right by people. So this guy is going to give you a deep threat. Now, I didn't catch a lot of balls at Georgia Tech because in their offense, it's an option offense, you're not going to catch a lot of balls at the wide receiver position. When I watched him on tape, I saw some drops. I saw him struggle at time and cuts. When I watched him live at the combine, caught everything, was fluid in the cuts. At his workout, I'm told, and I saw some video of it, same thing. Fluid cuts, good hands. So I think he got to work through exactly what he is. But at that point in the draft, this guy starts to make some sounds. And then you got Reuben Randall, LSU. Big physical guy, good target, really good hands. Not necessarily top speed, but, uh, but a real good football player. A real good number two receiver if you get him there. So those are a couple of players that they could be facing uh, when they get into 33 and 39. Obviously, the draft doesn't end with those first two rounds. Five more rounds after that. Maybe a couple of guys, sneaky guys, that you particularly like that that could be there later on that that might turn into good NFL players. Well, I think there's there's an offensive guard, uh, Bobby Brooks, from uh, Miami of Ohio. Uh, This guy is a real physical type guy. Uh, I think this is a guy who is under the radar. He was uh, in the East-West game, did not come to the combine. But Brooks is a guy that's getting a lot of action right now. And I think you're sitting there in the third round. I think he's a pretty good pick right in there. Charlie, thanks so much for the time. Be sure to follow Charlie Cashley on Twitter, at Charlie Cashley. And stay tuned for more to come here at stlouisrams.com.